Welcome to the VMware on AWS Update Show, the September 2023 edition and the VMware Explore Special Edition. I'm Natasha Maranakis and I'm joined by my co-host Chris Porter. Hi Chris. Hey Natasha, I'm super excited about today's show. So uh, yeah, let's crack on with this intro and get into the detail. Let's go. On the update show, we bring you up to speed with new releases and features on everything VMware and AWS related. We'll cover jointly engineered services such as VMware Cloud on AWS, which is the fastest and lowest risk path to get your VMware workloads into the AWS Cloud. And we'll be covering off additional AWS and VMware services which enhance the VMware Cloud experience, such as VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery, VMware HCX, AWS Backup and Amazon FSx. Plus, we'll let you know about any recently released blogs, reference architectures and customer case studies. Each show will select one or two items from the list of updates and with our guests, we dive into them a little deeper. Chris, do you want to tell us what we have coming up this month? Yes, so as we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, on the agenda for today, we have a special episode talking about everything new from VMware's recent conference, VMware Explore. Excellent, let's get started. Last month saw VMware's Explore conference take place over three days in Las Vegas. To help us unpack everything new from VMware Explore, we are delighted to be joined in the studio today by David Zhang from VMware. David, welcome to the Update Show. Thank you, Nasta. Glad to be here. It's great to have you here, David. Uh, we saw a lot of announcements at VMware Explore, uh, lots of coverage over those three days, really exciting conference. And in particular, there were some announcements around uh, artificial intelligence and partnerships with the likes of uh, NVIDIA. In fact, they were up in the, the keynote. But we also saw a lot of announcements around VMware Cloud uh, on AWS. Can you just recap for us before we dive deep into a couple of the items, uh, what the announcements were around VMware Cloud on AWS? Yeah, sure. And uh, we announced the following. VMware Cloud on AWS Advanced, ASX Plus, vSAN Express Storage Architecture, ARIA Migration, and also run some recovery innovation, plus VPC peering for data storage. Yeah, and that one in particular, I know we'll talk about a little bit later on. But let's start by looking at the first of those announcements in a little bit more depth uh, with you, David, the VMware Cloud on AWS uh, Advanced. OK, let us dive into. So David, at VMware Explore, we heard a lot of talk about VMware Cloud on AWS and the advanced subscription tier. Yep. And I know that'll bring a lot of new capability for our customers. Um, can you tell us a bit, a bit about what it is? OK. And uh, with uh, VMware Cloud on AWS advanced subscription tier, and the customer can get a lot of extra value without any extra money. For example, they can get a VMware Aria Cloud Management Pack and also a lot of advanced networking and security capability uh, for their i3EN and i4i subscription. And those products are now kind of built into a VMware Cloud on AWS by, by default in some respects. So as a new customer um, standing up an SDC, you'll get those capabilities. So can we dive a little bit deeper into kind of what are those additional services that are now included in the service? Sure. And uh, you can see from this slide, right? And uh, customer firstly will get advanced cloud management. In that advanced cloud management, they can get ARIA operation, ARIA log insight, and also ARIA automation. Also, another good thing is around the, uh, is the ARIA migration for 30 days trial. And plus that, they got advanced networking, that is the network NSX plus policy as a service. We will discuss that a bit later. And another good one is uh, advanced security, including layer 7 firewall, FQDN filtering, and uh, another good stuff is uh, identity firewall. So David, I know that we've mentioned that this will be available for new customers that want to deploy a new SEDC, but yep. how do we go about getting this for existing customers? Yeah, we don't forget existing customers. And the existing customer will get this kind of capability and actual value over time. And we are working closely together between VMware and AWS for that. 
It's exciting news for, for new customers and new SDC deployments and for our existing customers as well to get these additional capabilities. Yep. Um, one of the additional capabilities we talked about is a kind of a new product um, that hasn't really been discussed too much that was announced at VMware Explore and is now included in this uh, advanced subscription tier. And that new service is NSX Plus. Can you tell us a little bit more about that as well, please? Yes. And the SS Plus is our new next generation networking and security service, right? And they including a lot of uh, cloud service components. From this slide, you can see they including the policy management that we just discussed, policy as a service. And also, they got application visibility. That's the product we call NSX intelligence. For network, detection and response, and uh, we got as a service as well, including in this NSX Plus. More importantly, and we announced load balancing as a service, that is showing in this slide as a controller as a service. As you know, another service included in this bundle is for the HSS Plus. That is for the migration, help to customer to migration from on-premise and from other cloud to VMware Cloud on AWS. Yeah, I think this is really, really an exciting capability. I know my customers that I've spoken to, where they're looking to manage policy consistently across um, multiple SDCs. Yes. And also, where this is really interesting as well and helpful is where they've got NSX on premises, um, and then they're trying to use disaster recovery, yep. and they need to maintain that consistent firewall um, policy between on premises and their disaster recovery location in the cloud. And this capability now adds that for them. So it's really exciting this is included. Yeah. Definitely, and uh, that's exactly policy as service, and we designed for right to cover you know the user case that you just talked about across the different VMware cloud on AWS SEC to ensure the security policy the consistency and uh, you know between the different uh, SEC and also cover the you know the migration user case you just talk about, you just talking about from on premise to cloud to ensure the policy, no matter where they are, either in on-premise or in the VMC, Cloud on AWS SEC, they have the same security control and applied. Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you for that. Um, I think we should move on to some of the other additional capabilities that were announced um, at VMware Explore for VMware Cloud on AWS. Yeah, sounds great. So David, one of the other exciting announcements that came out of VMware Explore was the announcement that vSAN Express Storage Architecture, or ESA, yep. is going to become available um, for VMware Cloud on AWS SDCs. I'm really excited about this announcement, and I could geek out for hours about the capabilities here. But for our customers, what are the benefits for the Express Storage Architecture becoming available in VMware Cloud on AWS? OK. Once you know VMware Cloud on AWS adopt the uh, this new express storage architecture, and the customer get a lot of great benefits. For example, and especially for example, uh, space efficiency, and also no trade-off with the performance. Like you know, when we want to achieve better performance, we always suggest a customer or recommend the customer to using read one. But when you re using read one, right, and that means you need to be uh, spare a lot of space to cover this read one requirement. But with uh, this new architecture. And you can use the read six to achieve the read one performance. That means you maintain the space efficiency, also achieve the better performance. That's the big improvement of value to the customers. Yeah, I, what I really like about that is that kind of fantastic kind of additional performance with more storage and, and enhancements in terms of uh, space efficiency. Yep. Um, I also understand there's some improvements around um, compression and encryption, which our customers are going to benefit from, and at an ease of policy management as well, because they don't have to be making those decisions and updating the policy as the cluster um, grows and shrinks. So it should make management a lot easier as well for, for our customers. Um, when do we expect customers to get the express storage architecture? Will that just automatically be in their SDCs, or will they need to upgrade or, or migrate to ESA? And uh, this new architecture, and we will adopt uh, gradually. For example, when you build a new cluster, you will get, you can pick up either using the existing original storage architecture, or you can use this new architecture. And that's the customer option. And uh, when this feature become initial available, and the customer can apply this feature at per cluster level. Brilliant. Okay. And um, 
and as I'm right, there's no additional cost for using this capability. It's just going to come available, but in the in the i4i uh, hosts only. Exactly. That's the current plan. Brilliant. Okay. So express storage architecture, super exciting. But that wasn't the only storage-related announcement for VMware Cloud on AWS. I understand there were some enhancements to external data storage with VMware Cloud and AWS. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, David? OK. We introduced the support for AWS NFS and NetApp storage last year, right? And with this uh, compatibility, the customer can scale up their storage but independently from the computer cluster. And with this, you know, this new feature, uh, this year we introduced, we call them VPC peering. You know, last year when this feature first re introduced, they have to using VMware Transit Gateway to provide connectivity from the hypervisor to the external storage. With this new feature, they can change it to using VPC peering. And this VPC peering feature and uh, will be minimize the cost related you know, to transport your data from your hypervisor to the NFX storage. Brilliant. I, I think this really helps customers uh, consider FSXN for their external data storage. We had customers adopt this, um, yep. and, and, and it was successful in helping them with their needs. But now we remove the need for the transit gateway, which added that additional cost and a little bit of extra complexity. Yep. Um, now we can use VPC peering. That means there's a, a much wider use case, I think, for customers now to adopt this and a set of customers. So it's brilliant to hear. Yeah, exactly. And uh, this is not only minimizes the cost for the customer, also improves the performance. Right. VPC pairing will be provide minimal latency and than before. Of course, because you're not having to go through the transit gateway, which is, is fast and in region, but the, those extra hops is adding a little bit of additional latency. Yep. And with storage, we want to minimize that latency as much exactly. as possible. But with VPC peering, we're taking pretty much the fastest point-to-point -point path we can yep. from where that storage is being written to where it's being stored. Brilliant. Thank you, David. You're welcome. And that wraps up another episode of The Update Show. It's been really exciting talking about all of the latest announcements that have come out of VMware Explorer, hasn't it, Tash? It sure has. And what's even more exciting is the fact that customers that want to get VMware Cloud and AWS today will have access to all of these great capabilities with no additional charge. Yeah, all that kind of access for things like the enhanced storage architecture and VMware Cloud AWS Advanced, those capabilities around ARIA and NSX Advanced firewalling capabilities, all coming included in the service. So something to look forward to, brilliant news. Um, and you can find more information about all of those updates and services on the AWS website. Just head over to the website and search for VMware. And we'll have information on all of the things we've covered in this month's show in the description down below the video. There will also be a link in the description that will allow you to get in contact with a representative from AWS. Uh, so that all that's left is to say thank you to the viewers for tuning in and to thank David for being with us in the studio. It's been a delight to have you. Thank you for having me here. It's my pleasure. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.